Welcome to this video describing how to connect to a remote MariaDB or MySQL database using zero tier. Today we will be using an example installation of our easy platform tool which allows you to build remarkable websites and applications. In our example case we have a local installation of easy platform running on the server on the local host I mean and here we can go ahead and see inside the system information details that we are running a local database. But I have before, beforehand uh, prepared uh, an external database server which we want to use remotely using zero tier. So I will just open this connection first and then I will open a standard MySQL connection and you can see we have this one running here. But the first thing we want to do to connect zero tier to our remote database is we will need to log in to the zero tier central. So you will need an account for this. But once you have an account, I, the zero tier system uh, allows you to manage your a number of networks uh, through this interface. So first the key is to create a network. Your network will get an ID, which is a hash. This is the main ID that you use, use to connect different devices uh, into the network. So this is the most important thing. In addition, you have a, a name for the network. In this case, it's Insane Edison, but this is automatically generated. Then you have some basic uh, access control, private and public. We'll take a look, quick look at those first. So first, let us now join our local machine into this uh, database. Uh, sorry, the network. So I will open a, a new tab and I will use sudo and then zero tier CLI and join. So this allows you to join a, a remote network. In this case, it's the identifier that you want to pass to the command. And once you pass this command here, you will get a notification that join is OK. Then if I put a zero tier uh, CLI again, and let me put help, so we can see list networks here. So we can see that we have now added a network here. Uh, access is denied because it's private. So because our access control here is private, not just anybody can join the network by knowing this network ID. If it were public, then it would have already connected. To authenticate a client, you will need to go and find the devices here. You see that there is one uh, connector whose physical IP happens to be the one that I have now. And then you can click this one to be authenticated. And once uh, the authentication goes through, and the user then joins uh, this network, uh, the system will provide it a virtual IP. So in this case, you can see it will be in the network range 10.243, and then everything from underneath there. So in this case, we should now have uh, this connected uh, because we are authenticated. If we see now list network, now we have an assigned IP uh, from our local, uh, our network which we created. So we need to connect all the machines that we want to share network resources with to this specific network. So the next step is obviously now that we have our uh, laptop here, I can put it here, laptop, and save it. So now I know that this is my laptop, it has this IP on the network or virtual network and so on. Then going back here into the uh, console, if I exit the MySQL prompt, and then I will want to install zero uh, tier on here. Of course, I had installed zero tier already on my laptop, but this is to demonstrate uh, how to install zero tier on your local machine. So you will go into download, and under download, you have options for Windows, Mac OS, uh, iOS, uh, Android and so on, but in our case, our our machine is uh, Debian uh, 10, so we will use the RPM 
from here, or sorry, uh, the Debian package. So they provide ready built uh, installation script, which we can pass in here. So I will do the installation here. So this system is now uh, per, uh, installing the package onto the remote server. Now, now that I press the enter, it is. So once we have the server installed, now we have the zero tier client in here. So uh, the next step will be to connect to the same network as we have here. So our in insane Edison network, we can put uh, zero tier and CLI. And this is the same command, obviously, as on the, the network here. One notable thing uh, to look here, if, if I see ifconfig, I can see that I have only a number of uh, interfaces. But one of the big uh, features of a zero tier is that it will actually become a physical adapter on your network. So what you need to do is to add a new network. So I will join a network. Um, my network ID is here. I will also place it here in my notes. So the next time I need it, I can find it here. So this is mine here. I can actually already copy the IP from, from what I have for my laptop. So my virtual IP in the laptop in this virtual network is here. So my client is here. And then finally, what I want to add is the zero tier IP of the, the server machine, which is running uh, somewhere uh, in Frankfurt. So I will again join this network and paste. And join is OK. So again, we should see with the list networks command that access is denied because it's private. So again, we need to assign and make sure that this is fine. So you can see this a new machine, which in this case is the server has popped up here. In the meanwhile, uh, we can also see that we it takes a while for this to get an IP. So you can see briefly the different options available here. So you can see it has technically a DHCP server of some sorts. Uh, assigning these IPs and you have again all of the details here you can see the physical IP here and so on okay so that's it uh, the next step is then to briefly have a look at the IF config again so inside the IF config uh, we now have a new interface so this will be the interface that we will be using uh, to connect and bind our MySQL server to, because it also has now another IP and it's connected to another network. Of course, the network connectivity in between is handled by the zero tier software. So first of all, uh, what we can do is, first of all, let's name this uh, MariaDB server and so on. Uh, we can do just a simple ping, for example. So from our local network, I can ping the remote server. Now you can see it connected. First, it took a little bit longer time, uh, but then after it direct, uh, creates a direct connection, uh, the ping time becomes much more uh, lower. Again, if we close it and run it again, uh, it was still open, so it's fast. But anyway, so the system is already now routing traffic from uh, our laptop into a MariaDB server. So everything is going fine there. So next, what we need to do is some configuration changes into the MariaDB, because obviously the MariaDB by default is only listening to the local host. So what we will need to do is simply to modify the configuration for the MySQL MariaDB configuration. So here, for example, we have the My, My CNF. You can see something here. And if we 
grip bar and then let's see where this one was uh, bind okay this one didn't oh sorry bind and etc mysql so we can see the binding of the server is here probably you should uh, not necessarily bind uh, directly into this uh, the way i'm doing uh, but you should find something a bit more closer because now this one will be available to all clients so instead of the local host ip i'm binding to 0000, 000 which means that it binds to all available ips this includes our new uh, network interface whose ip is 10.243.133 and 164 so then after we have that executed i will oh service and restart the MariaDB restart so for our uh, configuration to, to take effect we'll restart it so now we have uh, the machine connected uh, on the other end we can see that we can ping it so that's fine this works great and I'll just actually now copy this IP from here so this laptop IT IP is oh sorry the server IP I will copy it briefly into into here like that so I just have it uh, in case I need it so the next part is then to configure the MySQL connection because now uh, if I open MySQL U root and then P well not even P uh, and then H for the host and then 10.243133164 so this connection is now it tries to connect but it's not allowed to connect to this uh, database server so what we'll need to do is we can start by creating a new uh, network uh, sorry not a network but a database so create database uh, easy platform so let's uh, we have now a new database which we will be using uh, but to grant access to this database uh, we will need to use uh, the standard grant uh, uh, syntax so let's put grant all on easy platform dot asterisk and then two easy platform and then at and here technically we want to connect from our client which is the laptop so we can put uh, 10 dot two three four of two four three three four one six four here you could also use the percentage sign for wild cards but let's just have it explicitly this one IP and then by bar. let's just put a password there okay so that will uh, give us access, access there so then we need to flush privileges so that these become available and then let's give this one another try so obviously with the root we still cannot get any anywhere so we have access denied for root user so we do have now a bit more further but now I will change this user into easy platform and so on and it requires a password so we can put the password here this is full bar so now you can see we have a database connection directly from our local laptop to the remote server through the virtual IP that we have in here so this uh, this uh, is working fine uh, then the next step is to modify the easy platform configuration to use uh, this remote server so here if we go hop briefly to uh, PHP storm and head over to the configuration and then parameters we we have the system configuration here so in this case obviously for the database host we will want to use our 
two, three, four, three, one, three, three, and then one, six, four. And database port is standard. We won't change that. Database name is Easy Platform. Our username is Easy Platform as well. And password is foobar. So this should now uh, enable the application uh, to load on our remote database. So let's give it a, a few moments as it connects. We did create the database, so I would expect it to, to work, but it might take a few minutes uh, for the timeout. And we're getting something here. So let's see the database. It's now connecting to a remote database, which is perfect. If I go into the content structure setting, you can see we get an error. This error is because we don't, don't actually we have a blank database. So what we can finish off with is just having the running the installer here or locally. So if I go into sites, zero tier demo, and then bin console, easy platform, and then install, and then clean. So this one will execute a clean installation uh, on, on the database. Uh, this is something that's running now. Everything is going through the pipe that we created, or not just the pipe, because technically the, the whole database, it's sort of a virtual switch in the back end. So all of this uh, is not actually going directly through or not going to my tier servers first. Uh, but then after the first connection, it actually pipes it through directly here. Uh, about pricing and so on, uh, the pricing here for for the zero tier connections is it's free to use. Let's see. It's free to use for 100 devices, uh, but then if you need more or more professional support and so on, then you will need to have a bit more uh, capabilities in the tool. Then you will need to up this. It's also worth noting that all of the zero tier application systems uh, is something that you can also run uh, on your own machine. So all of this is uh, open source. Uh, it does have a, a, a license which uh, uh, doesn't allow you to compete with the zero tier uh, offering here. But if you're using this for in-house in, in, in operations, that's not really a problem. But here, finally, we can see that this is going forward and it should be soon ready. Let's see. Okay, and we're getting information. So this is now the new database. And just to verify, here we have this system information and database. And you can see how to connect to a remote database using zero tier. Thank you. Bye.